All right, so let's talk about how we can set up multiple confirmations. So let's open up uh, trading view as an example. Okay, so let's say that we have a chart and kind of get something that looks like a chart here. Okay, so we have a chart and we want to send a couple different uh, a couple different signals so that we can confirm if you know it's the right time to trade we can we can either do that by using different indicators so we could send one ema yeah, yeah. and and something like that uh and we can confirm it that way or you could send the same indicator say a bj ema you could use that indicator and send different alerts over different time frames right and then you could use different time frames to sort of uh, do multiple confirmations as well. So two ways to use it. Um, but the way that we would use multiple confirmations and the way that we would set that up is if we say we have multiple alerts. So if I create an alert, um, and I don't really have the best example right now, but say I'm doing an EMA cross down and I want to make sure that this is crossing down, I'm going to send it once per bar close. And um, I'm going to set up my alert so i would come into here and i would go to my alerts i would create a new alert i would say that this is going to be ema cross and i'm going to set up the type i really don't need any of these so i'm actually going to select one of my other uh probably just create a new one Okay, so really I just need something super simple here. So I'm gonna press plus and it's gonna create me an EMA cross template. Okay, and then uh, I just need it to type. That's really all I need. I might do a symbol as well. So I might come in here and type symbol and this will set it up to where I can either pick my symbol or I can do dynamic and it'll do the ticker for me. Um, so, from here, what I can do is say I want to do an EMA cross for my first condition. So I'll do EMA uh, cross. Okay. So this is my first alert. I got that. I'll hit save. I'll make another alert. Okay. Uh, sorry. Let's back up for a second. Let's edit this alert. So I got this. Let's click on this to copy it. We'll come over to here and we'll paste it inside of our alert. Then we'll jump back over to here and we'll copy the webhook URL. And then we'll paste that in the webhook URL right here. Okay. So now we have all this set up for this one EMA and we're going to look for EMA cross down. And this is what I want. So I press create and I got my new alert. And it's saved in Trade Lab. Um, all good there. So now we're going to do a new alert. And for this one, I'm gonna come back over here and decide what I'm gonna do. Uh, let's say, uh, let's add like a, <laughs> let's add like a, um, like give me a technical, like the rune is fine. Uh, oh, I added it twice. Okay, so if I come over here and I get my Arun and I say that this is crossing up as well, right? Um, now, I don't know if this is good advice. I'm just pulling stuff, you know, but if I take these two yeah, variables yeah, yeah. and I say EMA and Arun and I both want them to cross up. So I say once per bar, okay. And then I come over here and I'm gonna say Arun up. And this is, I don't need to create a new uh, alert template. I know that this is called EMA cross, that's fine. Um, but I, I just need to change my type here. So I'm gonna change it to something like a rune up. Okay, so now everything can stay the same. I just need to click on my webhook, make sure that that's pasted in here. It should be, it should be the same. We're gonna click on this message. It's gonna be a little bit different with that rune up. We're gonna paste that in there and hit create. We can also name these so rune up here so it doesn't show up blank. Um, and then this we one you can see. Manner. Say that again. 
type name main song require yeah type yeah name. yeah the the alert name is just good to put in that way we don't uh we don't mess with it. this type right here it's not required like so you could delete this and not have something called type I just always give that as a default field because it's a really easy way to say, hey, like this is the name of my alert, right? What type of alert is okay, this? Okay. It's an Arun alert. Oh, what type of alert is this? It's a it's an EMA alert, right? So that's um, this is a great way to name your alert so you know what is firing. And you'll see how I use that in just a second. So if I press save, um, this is all good. So I'm gonna press save here. Now I have uh, an EMA cross and an Arun up. So what I want to do now is I want to get my variables and I'm going to, well, let's, let's, let's go one step at a time. So I just created my alerts. Let me show you what you can do with just your alerts. Let's go over to edit. Okay. And without the use of variables, without needing anything like that, what I can do is I can set up a uh, new uh, in, a entry rule, and for this one, I'm going to call it. Actually, I'm going to keep this one enter. I'm going to add a new rule. Uh, we're going to come back to this rule in just a second. For this new rule, I'm going to call this uh, EMA cross. Okay, uh, and I can name this whatever. Like I, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to match anything, right? So I'm naming it whatever I want. Um, the conditions. Uh, for my custom alerts, I'm going to look for type. So I told you, I say, I, I, I would show you how this lines up. So this is, I'm looking for my type. Well, what type am I looking for? Well, I want this one to be EMA cross. Now this right here, this has to match. What we just typed in, in type has to match right here. Okay. So we, we match that up. All right, good to go. And then we hit actions. So for actions, we only got an EMA cross. We don't want to necessarily uh, place an order, right? We, we, could, we could say place an order. We don't want to do that. So we need to be able to save information so that later on, we know that EMA cross was hit or not, right? So, Let's go to variables, okay? And in my variable screen, I can create a new variable and I would say EMA cross. I'm gonna make this variable a number, or sorry, a uh, true false, and that's gonna make it just either true or false, a little flag, okay? So I'm gonna press the check mark here and that's gonna save it. So this is my EMA cross. It's currently set to false. Um, let me check it, make it set to false. Empty is the same as false. But so we have uh, EMA cross, okay? And then we also have, um, I don't know. A rune up, exactly, a rune up. Thank you. And we can make this true or false as well. So all we're gonna, like we could be sending numbers. We could wanna know, how much the Arun is. But the fact is, I can come into trading view and I can say I want my Arun to be greater than 200, right? Or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so normally, like many times, you just want to know, hey, has this crossed, right? And if it has, then you just need a true false, uh, you know, to tell you, is it has it crossed, has it not? Sometimes you might want yeah. to send the dynamic value and then that case, you would want to make this a number. Right, instead of true false. Um, but here we have true false. We're gonna set these two up and we're gonna hop over to edit. So now that both of these are set up with true false, we have a, a strategy variables named after them. I can come into my action. So this rule is looking for a EMA alert. So now for my action, I'm going to set my strategy variable. What strategy variable? My EMA cross strategy variable. I'm gonna set this to true. And now it's crossed. Now I know it's true. So I can also click this handy dandy button right here. This is the clone button. 
And this is going to make me two of these. So now I have this one here. And I have this one up here. Okay, so I'm going to take this. And for this one, I'm going to name this um, a rune up. And this is going to be a rune up as well. Uh, so we have our EMA cross. Okay, we're coming back to this rule. This is what you're asking about. We'll come back to this in one second. This is this is my EMA cross rule, and we're looking for this alert, and we're going to set EMA cross to true. Okay, now I have my rune up. We're looking for a rune alert, and I'm going to set my rune up to true. Okay, so now we have all of those very we have both of those variables rune up and EMA cross set to true. Okay, now we want to place an order. So this would be my entry rule. And I'm going to say condition statement, strategy variables, a rune up must be equal to true. And, and I hit another plus right here, created another one. And my strategy variables, EMA cross must be equal to true. Okay. If those are both true, please place an order. Yeah. No. So now different alerts can come in at different times. This can be set and it will save it. It will remember that it crossed. And this can come in a couple minutes later and it will remember that it's ready. And then each time it will run this. Now, here's something a little important. This rule is first. This is going to run first, then this rule, then this rule. That's actually opposite because then it's not going to catch what it needs, right? So let's go over here and you see this arrow right here? We can move this down. It's going to flip flop right here. Oh, come on. There we go. Flip flop and do another <laughs> flip flop. And now we have EMA cross and a rune up. They're going to set their variables first. And then we're going to check and see if they're both true. And if they are, then, then set it. So all three of these will run on every alert. So one time the rune may come in and this one will fail. This one will pass and this one will fail. Then an EMA cross alert will come in a couple minutes later. This one will pass. This one will fail. But now this one still saved from the last time. So this one will pass. Does that make sense? Did I lose anybody? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting All right. I do want to cover one more thing before we end this topic. So we have our EMA cross and our rune up. And if these alerts send, they'll be set to true. Once these are set to true, we place our order. We need these are always still set to true and they don't reset. So we need to reset them. So we would come into the actions and we would say set strategy variables of rune up and to false and do the same thing for strategy variables. EMA cross. In the new builder, we won't have field type anymore. We'll just have this equals this set to this to this. And the the it won't be a drop down. You'll click on it and it'll be like a nice search box that you can search all of these all at one time combined. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be easier, I think. Uh, so we have uh, got an appointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. So we have these. I'm going to move these up. So now I'm resetting these and I'm placing my order. Right. So that looks good. So the other thing we need to worry about, though, is so we reset them when we place. But what happens if my EMA comes in and then four hours later, my Arun comes in? That's not what we want. Right. We want them to come in pretty close to each other. So there's actually two ways to cut, to go about this. Um, the easiest way is to just let it expire. So like to set a timer, right? And say, hey, 
I need this, these both to happen within 10 minutes of each other. If they don't happen within 10 minutes of each other, then it, it, I'm not going to place an order, right? Maybe I'm on the five minute chart. Maybe I want it to be two bars. That'd be 10 minutes, right? Maybe I'm on the 15 minute chart. Maybe I want it to be two bars. That'd be 30 minutes, right? So let's set that up real quick. Let's say I have, uh, say, 10 minutes, two bars on a five minute chart to, uh, to get this done. And if not, we're going to cancel it. So how would I do that? Well, what we want to do is we want to create uh, a, a new rule. And this rule is going to be called reset. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to look for my So one thing that I'm not sure that I've done yet um, is I don't have something that can be like an empty, like if I if I say no condition statements and I add an action, it's it won't run this action. You need to add a condition statement here. So sometimes I need to run a rule and I want it to run all the time. Um, and when I want that to happen, usually what I do, uh, just as a trick, I'm going to make this easier, but just as a trick, I say trade and then current price is greater than zero. Right. And, um, you know, almost all, always uh, the price of something is going to be greater than zero. And so that should be true. Yeah. Right. So that's just a trick right. I use. And this is going to be a reset rule. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my strategy variables, a rune up, and I'm going to set my strategy variables, EMA cross to uh, false. So that's going to reset. Now, I just said that this is always going to fire. I, I, something you may not know, you can send alerts to Trade Lab and we'll run them, we'll run the rules, and everything's great. But uh, Trade Lab actually has our own heartbeat rules. This means that we send alerts ourselves every minute or so, sometimes a little bit faster, and that gets your rules to run. Now, if any of your rules are looking for custom alerts in them, so if your conditions have custom alerts, none of the heartbeats will make these rules pass because they're looking for data in the alert that the heartbeat won't have. The heartbeat's blank. Right. So so it, these won't run. But this rule would run every time. It's just looking for uh, strategy variables. And so if for whatever reason you were updating these variables or, hey, this is a strategy variable, but we also have global variables, you know, and global variables, you can basically send messages between strategies. So what happens if a global variable changed in another strategy? This can run every minute. And since there's no custom alert condition in here, this will run on every heartbeat and check, right? Um, so the reset rule here, I just told you that this is always gonna be true. So that means that this is always gonna run and always set these to false. So I'm just gonna come in here and set these to true, and then it's gonna set it to false every time. That's not good. So uh, what we need to do for this is we're gonna say disable auto run. This basically, um, this is this is a little a little bit advanced. Um, it's it's almost like uh, coding. Um, this is like making a function. Okay, so, uh, it, in a way, I don't want to get too complicated, but basically, what this does is it makes this rule not run. It will not run when an alert comes in. It will not run when a heartbeat comes in. It will not run when you send an alert. It will not run. Okay, so. How do we make it run? Well, this is what we do. We go into actions. Okay, I told you that I want to set this up to where it says true, but then I want to give it 10 minutes, right? So I can set an action and I want to say rule timer. And what this rule timer does is it lets me run a rule after a specific time. So I can say this is hours, minutes, and seconds, right? Hours, minutes, and seconds. So this in the middle would be 10 minutes, right? And in 10 minutes, I can run my reset rule. 
So this rule is never going to run on an alert. The only time it's going to run is when I run it. And I'm going to run it after 10 minutes after this alert comes in. So I'm going to do that over here. And that means that at 10 minutes after this runs, it's going to reset. So this has, after this runs, this other alert has 10 minutes to hit. And if not, it's going to be reset and, and it doesn't, you know, uh, enter a trade. So now we have a reset function and we have a, you know, a way to reset our, our rules uh, or uh, sorry, our variables, if you will. Um, and they basically time out after 10 minutes, right? Um, so one other way that you might want to do that instead of timing out is if I have a chart, okay, and I am moving the chart, you know, up and down, and I wanted to do the EMA cross, right, or a rune up, if I have my EMA crossing up or crossing down, this is actually some sort of, um, this is like crossing down the zero, I think, or crossing up the zero or something. But if I wanted to say crossing up a particular value, right, I could say crossing up a particular value, and then I could also send crossing down that same value, right? So if I'm doing on a Fibonacci or something like that, I can say crossing up on this line and crossing down on this line. And that would be two separate alerts. I would create one for crossing up. I would hit save. I'd create mm -hmm. another one for crossing down. I would hit save. And with both of those alerts firing, and I would make their mess, I would make their types different, right? So I'd come back into the alerts, right into here, and I would set that up and I would paste that and that would be different. It would say up and down. And when I have up and down now, instead of making it timeout, I can programmatically use two alerts with one variable and turn that variable on and off. So I would need, again, two rules, one rule for one alert, one rule for another alert, and one variable, right? And I would turn that variable on when I hear my alert, just like I'm doing here. And the only difference would be I would get rid of this, I would copy this, and on the copy, this would be down, and I would make this down, and I would set this to false. And so now I'm sending two different alerts per uh, variable. So I would do the same thing for EMA cross and they would turn themselves off. And so then you're doing it logically. You're not just waiting it for it to time out. You're listening to the chart. Mm -hmm. So that'll wrap up this tutorial on how to set up multiple confirmations in Trade Lab. If you have additional questions, feel free to join us on Discord. You can find a link in the description. Or you can hit the help button at the bottom right of any page and create a support ticket. Go ahead and like and subscribe for more updates and have a good one.